A federal court may have declared immigration arrests unconstitutional. Now, this is by Michael Kagan. Michael Kagan, who is called a opinion contributor, dated 9-20-20-2020. Wait, 9-20-2020. There you go. 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time is when this is posted. And then we get this underneath here. This is all important. It's all important. Well, maybe that last part wasn't, but this, this, this definitely. The views expressed by contributors are their own and not the view of the hill. 1,820 shares so far. And I am recording this on September 21st. My time, 9.01 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So just to give you a, a sense of uh, how fast we move in Frico land. You'll, you'll get it when you see when this video is posted. Boom. The headline, a federal court may have declared immigration arrests unconstitutional. Uh, talks about uh, the uh, Constitution saying you have to have... Uh, going to arrest someone for suspicion of crime. you got to give them 48 hours notice. But uh, immigration and ICE cut in customs. Well, they don't do that. And now a federal appellate court in California recently uh, said the usual constitutional rot. Well, the, this is what. Okay, here we go. This is the essentials. The Ninth Circuit uh, Court of Appeal said the usual constitutional rules that apply to normal police all over the country <clears throat> also apply to ICE. And then they take a quote from <clears throat> the court's ruling, which the court they do link to. The Fourth Amendment requires a prompt probable cause determination by a neutral and detached magistrate. And then this person adds this... Uh, Michael Kagan adds, This really shouldn't be a big deal. Prompt independent review by a judge of whether the government has a legal basis to take away a person's freedom is an essential safeguard against tyranny. Oh, yeah. Prompt independent review by a judge of whether the government has a legal basis to take away a person's freedom is an essential safeguard against tyranny. Mm-hmm. And yet it is a big deal, and since, well, it goes through a bunch of stuff here that's uh, not really important. I mean, not to me. To him, I'm sure. Very important. But not to the, to the point of what my story is going to ultimately get to. <clears throat> the federal court's demand for the usual constitutional safeguards to apply to ICE should not be difficult for the government to meet, in theory. It just asks ICE and the immigration courts to do what local police and courts do every day all over the country. Yet it may prove to be a significant challenge. America's immigration courts were nearly at the breaking point even before COVID. Okay, whatever. It is now common for routine deportation cases to languish in court for years before getting an initial decision, much less appeals. And uh, it goes on, it goes on, it goes on. And it goes to say, okay, here we go. This is really... Here we go. Here we go. Let's try to raise this a little bigger. Make sure you see this. <clears throat> the Ninth Circuit's decision raises an obvious question. How many of those people were detained for more than 48 hours without a review by a judge? Were many of those arrests, which ICE likely thought were routine at the time, actually unconstitutional? The ruling, while sweeping in its potential to reshape immigration enforcement, is legally simple and straightforward. It ought to become the law of the land and it ought to spur the government to reform the immigration court system at long last. To paraphrase President Obama's description of undocumented immigrants, it is time to bring immigration enforcement out of the constitutional shadows. 
Michael Kagan is the Joyce Mack Professor of Law at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. He was a party to a friend of the court brief filed in a Ninth Circuit case mentioned above. Okay. He is the author of The Battle to Stay in America. Follow him on Twitter, Michael G. Kagan. Now, I am not going to say that I'm empathetic to his cause because I have no idea what his cause actually is. I'm, uh, I'm empathetic to people that uh, may, for the sake of uh, the individuals alone and not because of whatever useful political weapon they, they serve your particular faction. I, am, uh, I have a lot of empathy for the folks out there. It's one of my hardest uh, critiques of what's going on in America that has continued, which it's not new under Trump, but Trump is perhaps ramped it up, maybe not, I don't know, but it certainly at the very least continues, this uh, this uh, notion of rounding up people that have uh, been living here for years, working here for years, and just going to pluck them up in the middle of the night, and you break up families, and <clears throat> I just can't, I just don't cotton to such things. I think they're they're just for a lot of reasons. Even from my, I don't impose my Christian morality on anyone. I share my Christian morality amongst those who consensually share it with me. Uh, but uh, certainly in that framework, it's it, it violates my sense of my Christian morality. But uh, I don't really believe it's a Bill of Rights issue because it's not fundamentally... Well, it, it is if you extend Bill of Rights principles to everyone. That's another matter altogether. Now, I would be all for it, but that's another matter altogether. You'd have to get rid of nation states in order to do that first, and we have nation states. But it's not a Bill of Rights issue in that uh, this isn't really about... Uh, well, here we go. This is part of the ruling from this court. This is the link that uh, this uh, this uh, opinion writer so uh, happily um, provided. Fourth, we reverse and vacate the state authority injunction because the presence or absence of probable cause determines whether the government violates the Fourth Amendment when issuing a detainer, not state law restrictions. Now, here's the important part. Ready? There we go. In so holding, we underscore that we do not, do not decide here whether immigration detainers might violate principles of federalism or preemption. In this case, we're dealing with an individual, individual who has had the status of being a U.S. citizen, and now ICE is claiming that they don't have that status. So what they're saying is if he had the status of citizen, then in order for you to prove he's not a citizen, he actually has citizens' rights initially. That's essentially what this ruling is. But Michael... Michael Kagan is the Joyce Mack Professor of Law at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and is the director of the UNLV Immigration Clinic, which defends children and families fighting deportation in Las Vegas. He has lived in Las Vegas, the setting for the battle to stay in America since 2011. And there he is. There's Michael Kagan. In 2019, Kagan was a plaintiff in one of the lawsuits that prevented the Trump administration from including a question about citizenship on the 2020 census. This gentleman isn't really, to me, I believe that this gentleman, this is pure speculation, by the way. I don't know this man for Adam. I don't know not little about him. So, and then all I'm doing is general speculation. So, so take it for that and nothing more. But uh, the, my, my sense that uh, Mike, Michael Kagan is, is not necessarily so much interested in the, in the families and the children. Because if he was, he wouldn't besmirch their cause, their just cause. And my my. <clears throat> subjective opinion he wouldn't dismiss their just cause by using deceit to try to manipulate people to his cause in this man's mind and this is the, really the point of, of, of why I chose to talk about this story Michael Kagan if you happen to see this in this story this is just another example of someone who has put it in their mind that they are the angel and they are defending against demons 
And when you start to believe that you really are an angel and everyone else is demons, then you start to do things like this gentleman does, in which he undermines his own, the, well, not his cause. I believe, well, my speculation is his cause is not their cause. His cause, they are the tool, the vehicle of power through which he is disrupting the whole United States system. His, his ultimate aim is the destruction of the United States of America as, as a republic and to replace it with something. I don't even think he has something in mind, I bet. In his mind, I, I have no idea. I bet you, I, I'm sure that if you sit down with this man and give him, you know, describe what, what does... Uh, what does post-America look like in these lands? I'd like to hear that. I'd love to see. I'd like to see them write the the novel that describes what that world looks like, and us to get a sense of what they believe they're creating. Uh, because they don't even. I mean, they they're selling a product without even showing the product. They're just the ge the product is just the general hope of something which they're not going to define. This gentleman is, is, in my opinion, mostly just a destructor. Because if he, if he truly, truly was working, by my interpretation, if he was truly working for, the, for, for this just cause, and I would agree with him, it's a just cause. I, I think that we, we need to uh, have a serious conversation in America about how we're treating all these people. We know we, we know we allow them in. We know we want their cheap labor. We know we're living off of their hard work, their hard, underpaid work, and now we want to hunt them down in the middle of the night. That's horrible. And if this gentleman really cared about that, he wouldn't be, he wouldn't be using duplicitous acts where he dis deceptively tries to convince the audience that the uh, the the federal this is just to get attention, just to, just to. Uh, just to build uh, more public support for for just let's just ignore the reality of nation statism we all live in nation states and let's just assume somehow that all the nation states no longer exist then you could do what he's talking about you could just open up your land to anyone you know you could just extend all your citizens rights to everyone immigrants or whatever anyone you could just do that you can't do that in a nation state world in which you have nation states competing the minute that you open yourself up all of the other nation states will sabotage you every time and i tell you if for no other reason than any time that someone presents a model that fundamentally challenges all the other nation state models around them all the other nation states will want to destroy that model it's when uh, the uh, the dutch republic declared itself in i don't know was a 17th century somewhere around there uh, the, the Dutch Republic, they, they threw off their king, they threw away the nobility completely, and they became a total republic. Everybody, all of the monarchies lost their ever-loving minds, and everyone went after the Dutch, and there was a whole bunch of uh, naval wars between the Dutch and the French, the Dutch and the British, and it was all because they changed government. So... Uh, they don't the, these these folks i don't know if he knows or if he sought this out at all but uh you you have to no one on the quote-unquote american status left whatever you want to call that really has a conversation when they talk about their utopian schemes for creating a non-state where you live in a, in a world surrounded by bloodthirsty states they'll have you believe that the only evil in the world is the united states of america They'll also have you believe the only evil of the world is white people. White people in the United States of America. I mean, literally, they say, well, what do we need to do? We need to destroy Americanism and whiteness. That's literally, that's literally what they say they need to destroy. The, the idiots uh, that, that parrot such uh, just horrible, bigoted, and racist crap. And, uh, and they do so. Because the leaders told them it's okay to do so. Not only is it okay to do so, but if you don't do so, you you might not get a corporate advancement. It's like it's to that point now. If you do so, you might not be able to play in the NFL. It's like it's at that point already. It's it's pretty freaking wild. And I think that this person is probably a part of that just disruptor crowd. These people, they don't really... The, these folks don't really hate white people. They don't hate anyone or anything. I mean, this person individually, I don't know this. I'm talking about the, the folks at the highest levels that benefit from these particular vehicles of power. Whatever particular Citadelians make most of their money from China. Pretty much those are the folks that are 
that are using these particular types of vehicles of power to try to, uh, well, to prevent the full s separation of China from the U.S., especially business-wise. This would fundamentally kill their, their grand schemes. They had massive, massive world-dominating schemes. These, these uh, international corporations are already making more money than more than half of the nations. More than half of the nation states. They're, they're wealthier than more than half. The, some of these corporations are wealthier than more than half the nation states. They were dealing with that kind of power. And they were just going to get more, thanks largely to China and its emerging market. And that's getting cut off. That's what this is mostly about. And this individual here, I mean, this is the just cause. This is horrible what we're doing here. Like, uh, Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have borders. I don't, I don't think you need a freaking wall. I don't think I, th I do think you should have borders, border check. You should try to figure out who's coming in. You can't in a nation state reality. You just can't have open borders. That's it's moronic. Uh, but the people that are here, especially the people that have been here for a while and been working for a while, you can't be hunting them down in the middle of the night. You just can't be. It's horrible. It's uh, violent. And and to have this gentleman, Michael, to you decide. You have decided that people that disagree with you are subhuman and therefore you don't have to deal with them as uh, consensual equal partners. Uh, you, you deal with them as if they are killers in advance and uh, you have no humanity when you, when you do that, even if you're fighting a, just, a quote unquote just cause. So Michael, I'm gonna ask you to think about this my friend and ask yourself at the end of the day what do you want more, the destruction of America, or do you want these people to have actually good lives? Because if you do, then you want to preserve the America under the very, the, the very Bill of Rights foundations that these, uh, the new uh, DNC version of SJW ideology is fundamentally oppositional to. Those Bill of Rights that you're appealing to to protect these these uh, poor people. You're undermining it when you do stuff like this. You're just, and you're undermining them. You're undermining any American being empathetic with them because everybody can see how transparent it is that you're using them as shields, as political weapons. You're not seeking to serve them where they are for who they are. You're seeking to serve them. I mean, I'm going to allege this. I'm not saying this with certainty, Michael, so don't, don't. I mean, I can't see into your heart just because of this. This is my theory very tenuous theory but uh but it's true you are the you are basically a foil for a lot of folks that it absolutely is true they're doing this absolutely and i i suspect you are too but maybe not but what you're doing is you're using folks as 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 a weapon in 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 some ways possibly in bigoted hateful ways rather than 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 working you you if you really want to see a place where these people can live better lives, appeal to all of our bills of rights across the board. Our problem in America, Michael, is uh, not that uh, the, the Bill of Rights is not a it's not it's not whiteness. It's not majority. Well, it's not it's not it's not. Well, it is a majorityism. The thing is always going to be a problem in general throughout human in humanity for whatever whatever majorityisms exist. There's always a problem a problem there. Uh, but 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 in general, it's 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 not the patriarchy. It's that we because because you know what? Some people are probably happier in a patriarchal uh, construct. Y you ever think of that? Y y some people are happier in a, a matriarchal construct. Our problem is that we have have never had many opportunities for individuals to have the capacity to choose the type of constructs that they want to live their lives by. Everybody keeps insisting that they have the absolute right construct and everybody else's constructs are fundamentally evil. The only thing evil about constructs is the nature of the coercion. It's like SJW can be a beautiful self-discipline or it could be a, 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 a Nazi killing machine. Not killing Nazis, being Nazis. Just like Christianity. Christianity has the, the capacity to be benevolent and consensual building and community building. Or he could produce a, a, a Nazi. And, and Hitler was no Christian, but Hitler certainly was able to use elements of Christianity to give justice to what he did. So, in a sense, I'm not saying 
you know, but I mean, it, whatever you want to define. It's not my Christ, hashtag not my Christianity, and I'm sure there's a lot of Muslims out there see a lot of stuff that happens in their quote unquote name, and they're doing hashtag not my Islam, an atheist, same thing, hashtag not my atheism. We all have hashtag not mys, don't we? We all do deep down, Michael. Anyway, Michael, I would consider the people. And I would consider the opportunity that this land has. Let us extend the Bill of Rights to the marketplace and a lot of the issues that we have, even as far as our phobias or homophobia, transphobia, all that stuff. You, know, you could still be transphobic. You don't have to like gay people. You don't have to like immigrants. You don't have to like white people. You don't have to like Christians or Muslims or atheists. You don't have to like anyone. And I don't want to live in a land that tries to create an orthodoxy of the things that we're supposed to like and the things we're not supposed to like. I'm not going to ever live in that world. Screw that world. But what you can't do is use your personal feelings about anyone's group to treat them in the public square in any kind of inferior capacity. If you do that, that's where the problems are. Not until then. And no, your thoughts, even, even speaking your thoughts, do not warrant the... Uh, the the morality policing that uh that that folks seem to think we need we don't need morality police we need we need people that have the power to say no when people are being assholes that's what we need more than anything and if you keep watching these videos i'll talk more about that as as this thing goes on i think i'm gonna leave it at there so there you go i'll let you decide and i'll uh, put the links in the video so you can uh, make a choice as to whether I read this right or not. It's just, why, well, you know what? Uh, the views expressed by uh, Frico do not necessarily <laughs> represent the views of Frico. <laughs> no, no, they, they represent my views, right? At least right now, as I understand them. Subject to change upon uh, new uh, intake of uh, data or new understanding of data, whichever comes first.